Hey, hey, all you mentees, this is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me for an advanced look at the Heroes Reborn reprint omnibus from Marvel Comics. So, please stay tuned. And welcome back, all you mentees. Now, before I get started, a big thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market on June 16th, and then a couple of weeks later in the book market. What we're looking at here is the direct market cover, and one thing I want you to note, and I'll be doing a comparison here to my original printing, is that they added a subtitle to it, the original epic, and they added the subtitle to the spine as well. Now, here is what my original printing looks like. No, the original epic. And on the spine, it just says Heroes Reborn. Now, one thing that I want to note, though, is that on the new printing, here's a copy of the dust jacket. You are going to have the words, the original epic on there, as well as on the spine. So they added the words on the spine, but that's what the spine looks like. Now, let's go back to my first printing and new printing comparison. So yes, on the left is the original printing that just came out a couple of years ago, but went out of print. And on the right hand side is the new printing. I'll also be explaining when we look inside of the book, when all of this takes place and why it gets a little bit confusing. Uh, the direct market cover, this is drawn by Jim Lee, ink by Scott Williams. And I think Brian Chiodo does, or Joe Chiodo rather, does the colors. And this one here is from an image uh, by Brett Booth. I think it's a house ad or a poster. And this, of course, being the cover to the Fantastic Four, Volume 2, uh, issue number four. Again, the spine. And I assume they added the original epic subtitle because we have a new Heroes Reborn event going on by Jason Aaron. And here is the back of the book. Identical almost to the back of the original printing. Actually, I think it is uh, the same. And both versions cost $125 retail price. Now, let's look under the dust jacket. You have the same image by Brett Booth on the front, the spine, and the back. The colors are just a little bit darker in the new printing. I'm not sure why that is. Could just be my copy. <laughs> it's like making a composite Sioux Storm. Uh, both of these are printed at the R. Donnelly printer. Uh, this is the 2019 printing and the 2021 printing. That is the only difference. The thickness looks identical, honestly, from this angle. But let's go ahead and crack this sucker open and talk a little bit about it. Uh, we will do a comparison with the internal artwork and the build here in a little bit. And this is your creators right here. That is a ton of creators. Here's an image by Wills Protasio. And kicking it off with the Wizard One Half Heroes Reborn. This came out after the issues of Captain America and after the issues of Avengers and Fantastic Four and Iron Man. But it is kind of introducing you to this new world of the Heroes Reborn. Uh, it introduces you to Ricky Barnes. Yes, it is a take on Bucky Barnes. She's the new sidekick in this new universe. And it introduces us to the many issues of poor Tony Stark. But it all kicks off with Captain America number one. So let's talk about the content first. As you saw, there was a wizard half and it was Heroes Reborn half. Then we have Captain America one through 12, Avengers one through 12, Fantastic Four 1 through 12, Iron Man 1 through 12, and then material from the Incredible Hulk 450. Now, if you're asking yourself, how in the world are they collecting the first 12 issues of each series? Haven't we already done that? So, right after the events of Onslaught, so after, not going to spoil what happens in Onslaught, but just a little bit, somehow some of these heroes are transported into another world if you're a mutant you're safe you stay in the 616 universe and if you're not familiar with the 616 universe that term i mean the main marvel universe the comics like x-men that you've been reading since 1963 or amazing spider-man since 1962 so those characters got to stay in the 616 universe the superheroes like the avengers or uh the fantastic four and their villains got transported into this Heroes Reborn universe. Now, behind the scenes, it was a deal between Marvel and the image creators of Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld to lease out the characters for a year. So they've restarted the numbering system. They went back to issue number one. So, for example, this is Captain America. So this would really be considered Captain America Volume 3 because we had a Golden Age Captain America being Volume 1, the Silver Age Captain America being Volume 2, and then the relaunch of the series. So this is Volume 3. 
And then when he comes back in Heroes Return, that will be Volume 4, but hey, that's a completely different story. This particular volume is thick. We are talking 1,360 pages. And we, again, retailing for $125. I think I've shown enough of Captain America. You get the idea. He's reborn. And by the way, the way that they map these books out are in arcs. So you have Captain America 1 through 5, and then you're introduced to... Uh, Iron Man, and you're also introduced to the Fantastic Four, and then we go back to Avengers when the they, the Avengers are formed because of Thor. So it's a retelling. You don't need to have read anything before this, or I mean, unless you want to continue these uh, characters right here, they really aren't followed anywhere else outside of Onslaught Reborn. Uh, sometimes the Exiles visit this world. So if you do want to continue those stories, that's where you can find them. Onslaught Reborn, uh, Issues of Exiles. You can see some of these characters. I, I will say that, uh, what was it, the Young Allies, um, one of the characters from this universe did make it into the 616 universe at the end of the Onslaught Reborn saga, but I um, haven't really seen much of that character. You can find out who that is by yourself. And like I mentioned, you also have the villains show up. They're reimagined villains. You have, let me just show you this shot of Namor from issue two of Fantastic Four. I swear, Jim Lee draws the most badass character sitting on chairs. Look how badass Namor looks. Man, that is royalty right there. I don't know why I always said, like, does anybody else agree with me that nobody can draw people sitting on chairs better than Jim Lee? That's so awesome. All right, uh, here's the Iron Man, A Taste of Iron Man, written by Scott Lobdell and Jim Lee. Jim Lee doing the plot mainly for Fantastic Four and Iron Man. And this is drawn by Wills Portacio, inked by Scott Williams. Let me show you the armor with the fight against the Hulk. So the Hulk was kind of interesting because Bruce Banner got to stay in the 616 universe, and the Hulk, the persona of the Hulk, went, so like the savagery and all that, went into the Heroes Reborn universe. So... It's interesting to read Peter David's run on Hulk, and and like and what they did here was collect material from Incredible Hulk 450, where they touch upon that. Like, wait, why am I seeing different characters? Like, Doctor Strange shows up and see he sees different characters or different versions of Iron Man and of the Fantastic Four. Of course, he's dealt with the multiverse before, so he's very familiar with that. But it is cool to see them touch on that. Peter David did a good job of like acknowledging the fact that, okay. We did split Bruce Banner and the Hulk up, but read the wonderful Peter David collection that's coming out next year, Volume 4. That will all be in Volume 4 of the Omnibus. I think Mike Deodato does those years. And yes, Iron Man is fighting a naked Hulk. Let me just show you some more of the artwork. So you have Jim Lee drawing, I think he does the first six issues of the Fantastic Four, reintroducing characters like T'Challa. The Black Panther. Uh, you have Rob Liefeld doing the first six issues of Captain America. And then eventually, like I mentioned, other artists step in. You have uh, James Robinson steps in as writing. Walter Simonson comes in and writes uh, later on the Avengers issues. There's a crossover called the Industrial Revolution. Kicking off with Avengers number six, part one of the Industrial Revolution that leads into Iron Man, uh, leads into Fantastic Four, and then ends with Captain America, which features Cable. Now, is it our Cable? Is it our 616 Cable? Because I said none of the mutants made it over. Well, you can find out yourself. Cable versus Modoc, that's awesome. You do have material here from Uncanny X-Men. I think this is issue... Oh, no, Adjective is X-Men 65, written by Carlos Pacheco, where Jean Grey touches upon this universe. She f sees Tony Stark. And then some of the later artwork back here. I believe this is Ryan Benjamin. Uh, and you also have Joe Bennett. Joe Bennett, his run on Immortal Hulk. Look how different his art is during this days. Of course, he was... I've always said that he was trying to reach that Jim Lee level of artwork. And, I mean, at the time, what artist really wasn't that was new to the scene. But... Here's what his art... And this is the guy that's drawing the Immortal Hulk. This is what his artwork looked like in the 90s. So yes, this is in the year 1996 to 1997. Like I said, they had the characters leased out for a year. And then eventually came back. Now, they did have a 13th issue. However, that features characters from the Wildstorm universe. There was a 13th issue for each series. And because of copyrights and things like that, they are not collected in this omnibus. So neither 
and they're not collected in the complete collections, the trade paperbacks, or anything like that. Those 13th issues. And some more. Oh, Brett Booth. I forgot. Brett Booth takes over the Fantastic Four. Stellar artwork. I liked his art, too. Now, as far as extras, I'm sure you probably noticed some of the variants are sometimes in between chapters. Like, this is the cover to Wizard number 57. And then on the other side is the cover to Iron Man number 3 by Wills Portacio. And here is the trade paperback. This is the art that you saw on the standard edition cover by Brett Booth. And also on the original printing of this omnibus. And on the other side is Avengers number 8 cover. Now, as far as extras in the back, there is a letter here. I can't remember where it is, but it's by Stan Lee congratulating Jim Lee on re-envisioning these characters. thought that was really cool that Stan Lee wrote them a letter. There's also pinups in between chapters. And here is the Fantastic Four Heroes Reborn trade paperback 2000 introduction by Jim Lee. And then uh, this is from the Captain America half, or I'm sorry, yeah, the Heroes Reborn half issue by Dan Fraga. I forgot to mention he's the artist on that. And the comparison in the script and the final product, or the, uh, the pencils, rather. There is a nice little... Um, Look who that is. Uh, there's a nice little thank you, Guru. I thought that was really cool. At the end of this omnibus, as well as some other issues that are collected in here. I always like that image. Say what you will about Rob Liefeld. I don't know. That image is really awesome of this just oversized nemesis standing over Captain America. And I've always been a big fan of Crossbones. I know his designs are simple, but it's a really cool image. Uh, but yes, this is the type of artwork you're going to find in here. Uh, and... Just to kind of give you an idea of what's in store in case you don't know what this era is. So if you're into 90s artwork with 90s color, this is absolutely for you. This is more of the image style of storytelling um, when image was first formed. So if you enjoy things like Youngblood or Wildcats or Wetworks, this is up your alley for sure. Uh, but you do have the writings in here of Jeff Loeb, for example, Walter Simonson, James Robinson. There's a pin up there of Bucky. Now, let's talk about this binding and do a quick comparison. So the book does have 1,360 pages, and here's what the eye looks like. Making those spread pages look like this in the middle, towards the beginning, and towards the end. Man, this omnibus has a lot of spread pages, but hey, it was the 90s. That was the thing. All right, let's do a quick comparison. Original printing, new printing. By the way, from this angle, it looks like the original printing is just a little bit thicker than the new printing. Now, that also could be the binding. Now, let's go ahead and get these opened and look at the differences in the art. Uh, well, even the bookend pages are a little bit brighter here in the newer printing. Here's the first image, and honestly, I don't see a difference at all in the color tones or anything. The table of contents. A comparison of the spread pages in between both volumes. Actually, I think it's laying over a little bit better in the new printing. One thing I did notice is that the newer printing does have thinner paper than the original printing. Not by much. I mean, just a tad. I think this is the first image I can see the colors being a little bit brighter on the new printing as opposed to the original printing. All right. Now we got to some spread pages where you can tell the differences in the gutter loss, which is very minimal. Uh, the original one laying down a little bit better than the newer printing. And it looks like the colors are just a little bit brighter on the newer printing, at least from this image. Again, a comparison of some spread pages. This is from the Hulk 150 issue by Mike Deodato Jr. And some spread pages in the back. Now, to find out how these characters come back to the 616 universe, or if they're the same, go and check out the Heroes Return storyline. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. 
That was the content, the page count, and the build of this omnibus, and of course, the comparison to the original one. If you have any more questions, leave those comments down below. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel, and thank you so much to our existing patrons. Couldn't make videos like this possible without you all. And more importantly, all of you, please stay healthy, stay safe, and much love.